This story is built in verbal threads. Five, two, one. One received five talents, two talents, one talent. Five talent went off, traded. Two talent went off, made two talents. One talent received the one talent, dug a hole, hit his master's money. Then is the sequence of their coming back. Five talents. He said, I made five talents more. Master, well done and good. So they're just repetitions. So if you get it once, then you just repeat it. Five, two, one. Of course, the one talent servant is what it all leads up to. And he then has a whole different theme. Reaping where you didn't sow, gathering where you didn't scatter. And the master then picks that up and repeats it back to him. You knew that I reap where I didn't sow and gather where I didn't scatter? Boom! So that's the structure of this story, and it is structured to be remembered, and it is an easy story to remember. The final episode has a reversal of the normal expected gift of the kingdom of God. That is, that to those who have not, more will be given. Those who have, it will be taken away. You can hear this kind of rhetoric in political campaigns all the time. You know, the rich don't need an advocate. They don't need government. It's the poor, the middle class who do, and so on. So, so Jesus' words about this have been picked up a lot in the rhetoric of uh, political power over the ages. It's easier said than done. Jesus here is speaking about the blessings of the kingdom of God. But it is the reversal of conventional wisdom in relation to the kingdom that he states here. To all those who have, that is, to all those who have received the blessings of the kingdom of God and have participated in it and have trusted it and believed in it, they will have an abundance. Those who have not believed in it who have no spiritual gifts, they will receive, even what they have will be taken away in the kingdom. So this is a reversal of expectations at multiple levels in the story in regard to the kingdom of God. This story depends on identification with the audience identifying with the one talent servant. It's very important that you tell this that his digging a hole in the ground and hiding his master's money was a virtuous thing to do. It was the one way in the ancient world in which you could be protected against the possibility of being sued if you lost money that had been entrusted to you. So it was the one safe thing to do. And there were treasures buried all over the ancient Near East because that was how people protected their money. There weren't banks. People buried it in the ground. The statement of the one-talent servant was conventional wisdom in relation to the rich people of Galilee, uh, the landowners. You know, they all cheated. They were all corrupt. They all reaped where they didn't sow and gathered where they didn't winnow. And people just sort of named that. And uh, that was conventional wisdom. And it was a conventional attitude as well, so that everybody in Jesus' listeners' audience uh, could identify with the one-talent servant in terms of stating this about the rich man and the way that he managed his land. That was normal practice. But in this instance, what happens is that the master responds with a degree of violence that no one could ever expect and criticizes him with a degree of hostility that was totally unexpected, and especially then that he would be cast into the outer darkness. So it's clear that this isn't a story then about a landowner uh, down the road in Galilee. This is a story about God and about the risk of those who would be cynical about God, who would not have confidence in God, and who would not invest and utilize everything that they were given by God. So the way to, to convey 
the impact of this story is to lead the listeners into identification with the one talent servant. Now, this is in contrast to the way that this story is usually told, which is usually it is told in a way that conveys judgment of the one talent servant right at the beginning as if the primary value and what this story is about is investing your money in the stock market. Uh, and that you are willing to take risks and do all the, and that the virtuous ones are those who risk everything and make a lot of money, and that that's what it means to be in the kingdom of heaven. Nothing could be farther from the message of this parable. So do not tell it. But the one who'd received the one talent went off, and he dug a hole in the ground and buried it, as if that was a terrible thing. Well, it wasn't a terrible thing in the ancient world. That was the safest and most legal and reliable thing to do. And it eliminates, then, the primary dynamic of the parable, which is the reversal of expectations in relation to both his doing a safe thing and also of his appropriate cynicism in relation to the landowners of Galilee. 